Well, it's 7 o'clock, so we'll call the meeting to order. If, and any additions to the agenda? Hearing none, somebody wish to move the agenda as presented? Bob? Any question on Lyle's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Okay, adoption of the October 22nd minutes. Any so moved. Okay. Paul moves it. Any question on Paul's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Okay, the organizational meeting. Norna? Any question on Norna's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, that's that. Now we have a, a recognition for if you want if you want to come over here. Okay. For those that don't know Ron, which probably is nobody, but if you want to come look that way. Oh, okay. Okay. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> for nineteen years, um, dedicated uh, service to our community, and uh, you don't know how much it's appreciated, bro. I mean, thank you very much. And uh, I know that you were probably here for probably five or ten years before, and, <laughs> and, but uh, we really appreciate all that you've done for our community, and uh, I know that uh, NPC will probably miss you for a while, and then they'll probably be glad that you're not there sometimes, and then other days they'll be wishing that you'd come back. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thanks again. Oh, you're welcome. On behalf yeah. of the town, and, and, and Council and all our community, it's, it's been great to have you okay. participate. In our oh, you're welcome. Yeah. I, uh, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was very informative. It kind of kept me involved in what was going on with the town and the community. So, well, we that was, uh, like I say, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I know that you've had different positions in there. I mean, I uh, did you ever, were you ever chair? No, oh, I just uh, vice chair. Vice chair. Yeah. Well, that's good. Anyway, yeah. anyway thank you very much. Well, and, and, uh, you're welcome. And you're welcome to stay for the rest of the meetings. So you can... <laughs> if you'd like to stay, you're welcome to. Okay. <laughs> no, I'll uh, if you want head home. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're yeah, thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, moving on on the agenda, we have a gentleman here from South Coast. So if you want to take the center hot seat there. Um, Thank you very much for driving up. And My pleasure. I know I was in Lethbridge today, and coming home was wasn't going bad, wasn't too bad, but going home might be a little bit dicey in a couple spots here, and then more more to run across the road. It's pretty dry right now on the way up, but uh, yeah. hopefully we'll stay that way when we get back. Thanks for having me today. Um, as mentioned, my name is Peter Castrol. I'm the executive director of the South Grove Regional Initiative, where I've been there for nine months now taking over for uh, Pete Lovering, who was the previous manager at South Grove. I know many of you knew Pete. I'm putting faces to names around the room as I uh, look at everybody and get to know folks. I've met Michelle and Lauren, of course, before, and Kim, too. But it's nice to be here. Thank you. I was given a mandate um, by the board of directors back in the spring to try to do 70, um, to get 75% of our members every year to do an in-person report. There was a sense that uh, communication was a bit lacking on what we're up to and what we're working on. And the board really wanted to improve that to make sure that our members understand what taxpayer dollars are going towards. Uh, we made a few other uh, changes to enable that kind of communication. For the last, um, for as long as South has been around since 2004, the board has been 10 individuals drawn from the communities that are members of the organization who would serve on the management board every year. And we moved to a new system that we're trialing out this year where every community appoints one person to serve on the board of directors. Um, with a mandate to attend four quarterly meetings throughout the year. So not a huge commitment, but making sure that every community is there at least four times a year around the table, seeing what's being done with taxpayer money on this file. And then those board of directors members elect a five-person executive who are committed councillors from the, uh, the region who are specifically committing to working on regional economic development. So that's, uh, that's going on right now. Uh, Lori Lickman from Vulcan County is one of our five execs, and actually I found it to be very, very useful to have these five uh, folks who are doubling down on the economic development profile. They're very engaged, and uh, it's been nice to be able to have more bodies and to contribute, since there's only me and a part-time person who works along with me to work on the file. So South Grove is the Regional Economic Development Alliance for this part of Alberta. We try to coordinate the efforts of all the communities within our region, of which there are 26 now who are members of South Grove. 
towards uh, working towards common prosperity to keep the economy and the quality of life as good as it possibly can be and to improve it so that our kids and our grandkids can enjoy the same quality of life that we've all been able to enjoy here in southern Alberta. Um, you can go ahead and... Oh yeah, sorry Kim, I'm not giving you directions on where to go here. You can skip down to the next one there. Since 2004, when we were first incorporated, Selco's has been involved in um, dozens of large-scale studies and reports that can uh, continue to inform investments in the region. Our work tends to be less of the actual smokestack chasing, actual chasing businesses to put into towns, and more of the enabling piece. So we do a lot of the background work that enables your local economic development staff and your town staff to go out there and land new business or to encourage your local business owners to grow and improve and expand their own businesses to give them the confidence they need to create connections and create opportunities within the region. So we provide development tools, large-scale studies as I mentioned, training sessions for counselors and staff, and since 2004 there's been tens of millions of dollars on leverage for regional projects and tens of millions of dollars in external investment secured into Southern Alberta because of the efforts of self growth. An example of that is, um, so right now our funding model is that we receive uh, $100,000 every year from the provincial government, and we receive a per capita of $0.35 cents a head from all of our communities. So it's not a lot of money to run an organization on. But the value of the projects that we are um, uh, leveraging right now is over $3 million off of that little bit of money that we are based off of. And our annual operating budget is uh, just under half a million. So uh, we've been able to do an awful lot with an awful little. Uh, so this is a report on last year, which was mostly under the direction of Pete Lovering, 2017-2018 year. This is just a list of the various projects that we were involved in. Uh, one of the big highlights of um, the 2017-2018 year is that uh, Selco leaded heavily into foreign direct investment for the first time, along with some of our partners. Um, the, uh, one of the other read is Alberta Southwest, based out of Pincher Creek, and uh, the city of Lethbridge, and the county of Lethbridge, which really doubled down financially as a partner there. We sent delegates over to China who built connections with our sister county, uh, one of the sister counties over there to Lethbridge County. And they toured around and met something on the order of about 100 different business representatives and started building connections. Uh, this year, our foreign direct investment uh, efforts have continued to grow and accelerate. We've applied for new grant programs through the federal government to build on the success of that, um, those, those initial contacts that we made and try to identify specific investment and business growth opportunities that we can then market abroad. But foreign direct investment is only a small piece. Um, the renewable energy piece is also of note. Renewable energy in uh, Southern Alberta, as you can well appreciate, is uh, going gangbusters right now. There's tons of opportunity out there. And our focus has switched from just doing promotion of the region to, oh my goodness, there's more investment that wants to go into Southern Alberta than we can actually hook up to the grid. So how do we help enable businesses that want to come and put an investment in to get the hookup done, um, enabling the actual connection to, to work. And that involves a lot of uh, bashing our heads against the wall of uh, ASO and Fortis and the provincial governments and some of the exciting work that's going on there. And another thing that uh, really kind of uh, moved into the spotlight last year with the decision of the federal government and the supercluster funding is the uh, Protein Innovation Canada uh, supercluster that's uh, now taking shape and was launched officially at the beginning of October. So there's a growing industry in southern Alberta that um, is going to be focused on the production of plant-based proteins. The actual processing of the crops that we already grow right here, the immense amount of crops that we grow, and the immense amount of potential we have for improving and increasing that production, and actually processing that into commodities that are marketable, both uh, here domestically and around the world. And that looks like a lot of external investment coming in, companies that are interested in setting up and expanding operations that already exist elsewhere here, and it's also an opportunity for existing business persons here to branch out in a new direction and uh, get involved in something that's exciting. Thanks, Kim. Next one there. Uh, tangible returns. So just a few of the actual takeaways. Some people ask, well, you know, you do all this like kind of background work and stuff, but what do we actually see that self does? So your staff is going to be contacted very shortly. We've got this, um, this big town folio profile for Vulcan set up. Um, for all of our members, we struck a deal with uh, a company based out of Saskatchewan called Townfolio that does market data and investment profiles for communities, and they do it quite well. And we got that deal signed at the beginning of October, 
and uh, they are just finishing taking the pre-generated profiles that they make for every community and improving them now that we've paid for them. And the next step is to reach out to all the staff and connect and start doing the training and get it integrated into everybody's website. So there's also the community business uh, retention expansion marketing plans that were handed out last year, the community broadband reports, and our new grant ready program that we'll talk about today. Next one, Tim. This is just a list of different research projects that are informing investments right now that we've got on the books. Um, you can browse them at your leisure on our website. The water for economic development there is, I think, the most significant one. Um, when companies come along and they want to get access to water licenses in southern Alberta, sometimes this is a dicey thing. But back in 2009, South Dakota negotiated a deal with the uh, irrigation districts such that the irrigation districts all agreed that they would apportion water for new projects that create economic development for the region. So that agreement exists uh, because of South Dakota's work. And we can go out and we can get those water licenses for new businesses. Thanks, Will. This is a list of our current strategic plan and the, uh, the main projects that I'm working on. It doesn't encompass everything that we're working on. It's just um, the things that were written into the, uh, the plan in the, in the spring. It's ambitious, especially for our uh, staff capabilities, but um, we're an ambitious group of people. The one I wanted to highlight there is our re most recent study that we put in applications, grant applications to secure. And it's a, uh, a cost-benefit analysis for rural broadband deployment. The idea being that, listen, everybody tries to make the case for rural broadband deployment and the economic value that comes out of it, but nobody's done this study. When we started ser searching around this summer and looking to see if anybody had done this, nobody had. And the first study was released for the state of Indiana back in September, and it was extremely interesting. The numbers that they returned on it were like, oh, here's actually some interesting data that says that this pays society back in terms of GDP growth and in terms of economic return to the entire region. So we put together a project now in concert with a couple of professors from the University of Lethbridge to do a study for the entire province of Alberta. And we've reached out to a whole bunch of different uh, corners to get it funded. And we're hoping to have that uh, fully funded by January and off to the races. We developed it also in conversation with um, policy people from Economic Development and Trade up in Edmonton. So they are excited about the project as well. And we're hoping it influences their policy as they said. All right, next one. So our new grant writing program that we just got signed. So we have hired a company that we worked with before out of Calgary who is going to be putting out a grant report that we're going to send out to all of our communities every single month that basically lists, here's all the different grant programs that are available to communities in Southern Alberta right now. And as they get to know each of the staff members, like the, the chief staff contacts from the different towns, they're going to be able to refine that grant report for your community a little bit better. Now, the report is free. We're paying for that from self -Girl. And if you want to pursue one of these grants, you can either do it yourself. Or if you don't have the staff resources, you can hire these folks to do it, they're professionals, at a preferred rate. They're giving all of self -Girl members a 20% discount for their services. Now, obviously, the thing that's in it for them is they also do the after work as well. They do project implementation, they do project design. And so if you want to strike a deal to hire them to do the bigger projects that they really make their money on, they're available to do that too. Good folks, though, they helped us do a strategic plan in the spring, and they've been under projects for self growing in the past. Uh, Plant-based protein, I mentioned before. Listen, this is a uh, this is probably the biggest market opportunity that's uh, available to Southern Alberta right now, and that includes Vulcan and Vulcan County. Um, if you don't want to know what I'm talking about, plant-based protein is where you take uh, peas or you take lentils, and you fractionate it down, you put it through an industrial process, and you actually pull the protein out in a powder form, either a liquid or a powder form, and now that can be put as an ingredient into any other kind of food out there that you want. Actually fractionating the, uh, the raw crop is an awesome business opportunity. Actually taking the protein that you pulled out of the crop and putting it into a new pro a food product is an awesome business opportunity. There's real opportunities for folks, uh, you know, clever, creative entrepreneurs who live right here in the Balkan to pursue industries that go into this. And the basic uh, trend that's uh, underlying this whole movement is that by 2050, the world demand for high quality food is gonna grow by about 70%. And that comes along with a massive increase in the global middle class. Folks in uh, all of East Asia, India, China, uh, the Koreas, and various other parts of the world are getting into the global middle class and they want high quality processed foods like you and I enjoy. So you talk about market share increase and you talk about an area that's in a position to grab some of that share, that's us. So we're going to be working heavily on that. Um, I'm sure Lauren has shared with you some of the stuff we're doing already. 
Opportunities for Vulcan specifically, I try to sit down before I kind of do these things and talk and scratch my head about what are some real opportunities for a town like Vulcan. Um, obviously, renewable energy and uh, the plant-based protein that I've already talked about are, are real opportunities. It's not just something that uh, Vulcan County can benefit from, but of course, if uh, Vulcan County gets a, a huge new project in the, out in the rural region that gives them a lot more linear assessment, that does benefit the town because a lot of that money ends up flowing into the town as the uh, regional service center, right? Um, insect protein processing. Here's something that you don't have to have a massive facility out in the country in order to do. Um, Plant-based protein is growing, but also insect uh, protein. There's, uh, these folks thrive on being able to access uh, organic waste as an input cheaply, which we have a ton of around here, and then being able to sell to feed producers. This isn't just for human consumption, that's kind of a growing side piece. It's mostly for animal feed uh, consumption. So we have cheap inputs, and we have near access to feed producers. So if one of your local folks wanted to jump into this, they just need a giant warehouse someplace in your industrial sector here, and they're off to the races. Um, egg servicing industries, obviously. Uh, Vulcan is well positioned to continue to be this. I was looking at some of the, the, the data about Vulcan before coming up, and uh, Vulcan, when I look at the towns that are in Vulcan County, a lot of them have sustainability issues, as uh, we see just trends changing. But the town of Vulcan itself, I'm not so worried about long-term sustainability for. A lot of the villages might unfortunately eventually disappear on us, but the geography of the region is that it's so wide and vast that they do need a service center, and Vulcan is that service center. Yeah, um, be careful when you tell the other ones that. I know. I know. <laughs> well, we've, I've had some hard conversations with some of the folks who live like in the Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, you're, the the population here is aging, um, but you still have a strong family based uh, population as well, with really, really like a fairly high average income in households. And you have a really, really diverse industry base here as well, which says to me, service center. It's not a town that relies on the rise or fall of one particular industry. You are servicing a large geographic region. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, Broadband-enabled service-based businesses. You have great broadband here. That's fantastic. As some of your young entrepreneurs start to uh, figure out the opportunities that are available there, um, there's opportunities. Look what happened in McGrath with that massive uh, insurance industry that was just domestically grown, and now they employ like 100 people in the little town of McGrath who are making really good money, and they're working all over the world just off their computers. Uh, regional airport development. I know the airport's uh, small, but there are definite, definite opportunities, especially when you pair the ability to ship goods quickly out of Vulcan with some of the other growing industries, such as the plant protein industry there. Uh, and event tourism, I've always, uh, I, I love Vulcan, and I've always thought that uh, with the right energy and the right uh, inspiration, it could become massive. I mean, if you pair it into a, uh, like a music festival as well, and it uh, really captured the imagination of the younger crowd, and, yeah, there's, there's opportunities there. The new Coachella, and uh, urban French partnerships as well. Um, one of the new trends, of course, that I'm sure you're all aware of, is partnering with uh, the county that surrounds in order to put up new industry and attract new businesses and be sharing the business growth that comes out of that as well. So there's, there's just a few of the ideas. Um, I think that's the last slide, is it Kim? Yeah. So the year ahead is basically marked by incredible opportunity. The problems that we have at South Core right now are good problems. There's more opportunity than we can chase with what we have available. We are, we are doing the absolute best we can. Southern Alberta is set to boom. Vulcan's kind of on the fringe of where a lot of that growth is happening. That doesn't mean they can't benefit from it. You have the advantages of being able to offer certain specific um, access to certain kinds of crops that are growing regionally, and uh, it's just a matter of imagination in order to take advantage of the large-scale trends that you see Southern Alberta booming at least up till 2050 when we might face water issues. But uh, if, if I was going to push one message home for you to take away, it's that the future right now is really, really, really bright. I mean, you just look at the population boom that's kind of occurred down closer to Lethbridge and the towns that surround Lethbridge and their quarter out towards Tabor. Uh, a lot of those towns have grown by 30% over the last six, seven years. It's incredible. Well above the, uh, the national average and sustained economic uh, prosperity through boom and bust. I'm happy to take any questions you might have, but uh, it's, it's, it's good to be here. It's good to put faces and names, and 
I really, really like this job and I like working for all of you. Thank you. Any questions? When you talk about the fringe, you know, we've always felt that. Yeah. And we, we feel it from a lot of the organizations that we do belong to, especially the ones from the south and the ones to the north. And either we're too far north or we're too far south for a lot of the organizations. So we feel like the, yeah. you know, the orphan, um, you know, whether it's South Grow or, or um, some of the other ones that we have belonged to for the years. And um, it, it is sometimes a hard sell to, uh, for us to, to see the, and, and sometimes it's our own fault because we don't get involved in the, in the, um, on the boards. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, again, you, if you're not there as a pusher and a shaker, um, sometimes you are, are, are the chaff that falls out at the very end of the, out of the combine. You don't go into the hopper at all. So, so again, you know, it's nice to hear that you've got, you know, some visions to try and bring us orphans back out to the, into the pack. And, and uh, make us feel a little more welcome. Um, the other one was on broadband. I did get a, a text message from um, from Mayors and Reeves about uh, there is a survey out there. Um, it's uh, I assume it's it says high speed internet sur services surveys comp competition rural Canada. So I assume it must be a federal um, survey that they're. Asking for us so all, I'm not sure if, if you guys are in touch with that or not. Yeah, we just shared that one around in last week's newsletter. Yeah, Jill just sent it for Mayor's and Reeves. I haven't uh, hooked on to it yet to see what it's all about, but uh, I know that you know Bernie from from um, down in in um, Coleman or no, not Coleman down in Waterton. He's a big big believer that the you know the broadband is going to be there. You know, panacea of, of a lot of small communities, and and I think there's a lot of communities that haven't seen any in, any advantage at all. Um, that wasn't there, other than you know, the, the speeds have helped out a few people that have already been using some source of, of um, yeah, but but it hasn't increased their numbers. Of, I mean, the McGraths and some of them that have, have seen other businesses come. Version of it, I think, is one thing, but I don't think we have really seen a huge, huge, you know, um, numbers in our community. No, but if you don't have it, it will kill the community over time. Oh, well, I, I agree, um, but the, the bad thing about a lot of communities that you know, um, like the Olds, as an example, that went out and spent their own, you know, fourteen or sixteen million of mm -hmm. their own dollars, um, you know, feel kind of. Uh, again, like the orphan child that was told there's not going to be any money there, so do it on your own. Now all of everybody's pulling up to the, the trough to get the, the funds from the provincial and federal governments to put on that you know high speed into your community. So you know I, I think there are going to be ones like the the old, especially when you know people say, well, if it's in your community, they're going to support your community and on on on. But yet you find that people talk with their pocketbook. And if they can save two cents by going from Telus to Axia, back to to Shaw to whoever their supplier of broadband in their in the community, they'll do it. Yeah. The, the loyalty, you know, and Olds honestly thought that there was a ton of loyalty there. And even if you talk to Bernie from Waterton, he believes there was a lot of loyalty there. But when they started investing that money, um, people talked with their pocketbook, and and it it is a, a tough one. Yeah. You know, so. We were fortunate, you know, it didn't cost our municipality a pile, but I mean, we tried putting high speed internet in, and, uh, and you know, we invested, you know, four or five hundred thousand dollars into high speed internet that is not even there at all, anymore at all. And uh, well, I think it was probably double that in the end, but you know, yeah. but, but anyway, it, um, it's just that, you know, sometimes, you know, they, you know, the panacea of something, you know, is, is, is there so but anyway any, any other questions for, for Peter well thank you very much for taking the time to come up and, and um, we appreciate the, yeah, the time you've spent and thanks for having me and if anybody hasn't signed up for our newsletter it is the best economic development newsletter in the province <laughs> just because I'm the one saying it doesn't mean it's not true <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, thanks again, and, and uh, you're welcome to stay, or if you, if you want to head off. I've ejected that thumb drive, so you can 
Just pull it up. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm probably going to get home. Yeah. No, thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, no doubt. Thank you. Safe drive. Yeah, thanks again. Okay, moving on to the agenda, number 5 1. Um, okay. Recurring grants and organizations. Um, we kind of semi spoke to this when we were requested to have some funds. And so here's a couple examples of a couple of organizations that have fulfilled their mandate of supplying the information that's needed to qualify. Any questions on any of those, or? The, there's just a mistake on their statement of financial position. Which one? For rainbow literacy. I mean, that's for them to fix. Just, I'm just being picky. They're comparing 2018 to 2018. Yeah, I saw that too, the yeah, first. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I just hope that this is just a typo. Yeah. Well, they've been signed off on those, but... <laughs> well, yeah. it's just on the one page. The second yeah. page is right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the rest are right, but uh, yeah, just they the probably should, because if they have to send that in, they might get caught on that. But it's nice to see that they're supplying it so we got stuff to work with. Yeah, yeah. because you've added it to the, uh, to the policy, and we've... Uh, Included it in the 2019 operation budget. This is more for your information, knowing that they, unless you'd like to see changes to it. Okay, any questions on either one of those? Okay, um, you don't need a motion on that. No, you can receive everything for your okay. information if you'd like. All right, moving on to the Vulcan tourism appointments. So we have one from Vulcan County that has come in. And then the one from the Chamber of Commerce. Have we had any... Um, We've had some members of large inquiry, yes. Good. Okay, any question on either one of those two? If not, we will move on to the Farm Safety Smart story or the requesting some funding. They annually make this request and we to date have haven't uh, haven't funded. Questions? Paul, you have a call? Didn't we just look at one from another organization not too long ago? Similar? Very similar, yes. Yeah. And said no. Okay, no questions. Okay. We're moving on to the <laughs> Highway 320 Three. Development Association. This is, I believe, the second time they have um, asked. Um, they have a, there's a list of the ones that participate and then a, a list of ones that they have gone after that don't participate. Well, I think I read somewhere that uh, was it was the city of Manhattan and the city of Lethbridge aren't really standing behind this. Um, they belong to the committee. I, I yeah, right. Oh, I thought I read something in here that. Yeah, um, they maxed out ten thousand. Okay. Um, City of Lethbridge, you know, allows them to host it in the meetings at their facility and for free. Um, Thank you. That's on the next part because I remember reading that as well. Yeah, it may have been mentioned in their strategic plan. They give regular presentations at the mayor's range. Yeah, the, there's three or four that belong to this that come to, like from Pitcher Creek and Fort McLeod and, and, um, and, and Coaldale. The, 
um, I'll, I'll speak on it if they are. I found it kind of interesting because the, um, they're asking for Waterton um, to participate and yet Bernie always talks about being at the meeting. <laughs> so. And yet we are rather on the fringe. Well, again, we are it's definitely, close. I mean, if you spend most of your time going north, you never get an opportunity to travel Highway 3. Um, if you have family or reasons to go south, you know, you, you have to you know, travel three to get to it part way. Okay. Any thoughts, comments before we move on? Okay, none. We'll move on to the Twin Valley Water Commission budget. Unfortunately, they didn't do a comparison. So if you didn't have last year's budget. And uh, I just, because of the, uh, because of how the budget went last year, I just put in the bylaw stuff that, so that uh, so that we're actually following the process, that 30 days if you do want to make a comment. Uh, Paul has had an opportunity to go through the budget with, uh, and uh, Kathy and I have also gone through it with her as well. So. We I can answer any Basically, questions. Basically, this point, there is no change in your, in your rates. Again, if, if I wouldn't, if I didn't have last year's, I wouldn't have a hot clue. Yeah. I mean, which it, I mean, I know that you guys go there, but to me, when I read this, it's a waste of a uh, piece of paper. Um, you know, the numbers look great, but uh, what do I have to compare it to if I don't pull up last year's? And so that would be one comment I'd make, and I don't mean it as a total negative, but, you know, Again, if I was a commission member, I'd be saying the same thing, that uh, uh, d disappointment because it's not a, a comparison year to year. I have to ask, but ACFA old and ACFA new stands for? Those are the old uh, Alberta Capital Finance Authority loans that uh, were, when okay. the commission was formed, uh, they assumed the ventures for the old water treatment plant that the town had. So they took, that's what the, a, the CFA old is, is the old loans, and the new ones are the loans that they took to uh, to finish the project. Okay. I have trouble with acronyms sometimes. Oh, so, so do I, you know, and then sometimes all the time. <laughs> There's too many acronyms out there. You know, and then the same with the YE transfer. You know. I assume that's your end. But yeah, I, I assume so too, but um, Sometimes yeah, it's, 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 assume it's just an assumption. Yeah. Um, and, and again, maybe they're in the one that goes to the authority, to the members, they have uh, a, a more detail. But, uh, well, there's one to buy it here. Where? Sorry, I didn't This is it. what was provided. <laughs> yes. So. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions? But you guys have read it over, and you say that it's a status quo. There, uh, yeah. There's no rate changes, and there's actually a small decline to administration fees. So. What, what about our, um, our being within the 10% you know, for water? Uh, we, and uh, that's why they do it in term as well, is because until the end of the year, we don't know about uh, within our 10% for 2018. Oh. So, so we won't know until after January. Because that, that, that potentially is another hit. Could, could affect it, yeah. Um, by looking at our numbers, the uh, heat from the summer, we're okay. Okay. So this budget, it just says 2019 budget, I assume from January 1st to December 31st? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they run on calendar year? Yes. Oh, okay. They follow a very, a very similar process to approving a budget. We do, they do it in 
their pay, and then when they get all their numbers after the year end, they do an amendment to bring it in line. Yeah. So, then they follow the same process that we do. It makes it a lot harder because nobody has a final budget until. Yeah. Yeah. No, which is understandable. I mean, and same with the year to date too. I mean, um, you saw it in our budget as well. Yeah. Okay, any other comments, questions? This one here, I suppose we all need it. You just receive it for information. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, receive all this for information. Okay. So, Jordan Lee moves all the correspondence items one to five. The, sorry, if I, if I will, if you did want to comment on it, you could do a motion to have administration yeah. inquire, but because you're just receiving it for information. You can receive all of it. Okay, was there any other comments, questions? Okay, hearing none, all in favor? All right, moving on to current business, 6 1. Hi, Jermaine. Buy it. It just do, Sappy. <laughs> well, uh, there's, uh, just so that you're all very aware. Uh, this is all the information that we can provide. It is, uh, there is someone else looking at it. We're hoping that we can get it, but it's a, it's more of a timing thing. We're, we're going to make as quick of a move on this as we could. Okay, can I make a motion? It's too far in the first thing in the morning. Absolutely. I'm actually going to let them know right after the meeting. But there's another company going to look at it tomorrow that had their name in first, so. Uh, so somebody for, should go over it for tonight for, and flatten for, the tires? For, for the lack of uh, <laughs> this being on camera, it's uh, they're hoping that they will start to negotiate on price. <laughs> At this price, we're, we're asking what they're asking for it, or we're um, paying what they're asking. So if they do negotiate on price, then we will have a better offer. But if they take it for what it is, they were the first one to, uh, to say that we'll take it. So it's hard to compete against private companies when it comes to that, though. Having said that, you've seen all the prices of new units. So if not, Stu will be back. But Stu will be coming back in the capital budget here fairly one of these days. Okay, so all moves that we proceed with uh, six monthly purchase. Purchase? With, with expediency. <laughs> <laughs> the text will go as soon as you let me go, so. Okay, any comments on Paul's motion? Very none on the paper. It's care, thank you. Okay, moving on to the draft operating budget summary. So everyone had a chance to look, uh, go through the summary very quick. To be completely honest, if you go right to the very bottom, we're a hundred thousand dollars difference. The hundred thousand dollars in revenue was split in different areas, mostly in the split with the county. Uh, for and the expenses of 100000 were uh, the addition of the project manager for the pool. So the rest of the uh, categories, when you went through the detail, you'll see where all of the, uh, the minor changes were. I'm more than happy to go through the details with you. The summary is basically just, as like Tom says, you can see where you are year to date, what you budgeted last year, what we're budgeting for this year. Uh, we kept the numbers for our taxes at the same assessment and the same tax rate. Makes it simple for you because that way if you pass that budget and the assessment changes or uh, then you could do uh, change the tax rate to make up that difference. Did, did, um, did they talk about anything about the assessment changing much? Phil? I phoned Ryan just as for a heads up and he said that there has been very little growth, but it's also a little, hasn't seen uh, much fluctuation in pricing either. Like it's, it's this year's held really, fairly fairly. It was just, so. just as a question that's coming up. Like Kim said, if we keep it the status quo, then theoretically, if things haven't changed much on the assessments, then we shouldn't have to play around much with the no aid. But if the assessment that would be nice. If it feels like there is a change, so then we're going to see. Either if we keep the budget at status quo, or areas of, of uh, concern of where we can cut. Mm -hmm. So to go through, that was the summary. Like I said, the summary is basically what you see on a month-to-month -month basis anyway. So you, 
basically know where we're at uh, to the end of October. So if we go into the detailed report, that's where if you do have any questions, I can I can go through this and it basically tells you you know where the nuts and bolts are being spent. Uh, so things of that'll catch your eye right away. You know, a five thousand drop dollar drop in council other expenses. That was your jackets uh, coming out of there. We made an adjustment uh, now that we know your committee commitments, as it was a new, uh, new some new councilors on there. Uh, we didn't know how the committee appointments were going to be distributed and the amount of time that people were going to be spending. So we've readjusted those to bring those in in line uh, administratively. There isn't, uh, isn't very much of a change. Of course, the 1.8% the, the salary increase that you'll see across the board uh, through the majority. With Champion pulling out of the food bank, does that change anything? No. Uh, that's uh, They pay for their portion, and the province pays the other. So we'll see. You, you see when we get to FCSS, you'll see our revenue dropped a little bit. Oh, yeah, it wasn't like a ton, though, was it? It wasn't. 12000 I believe, from the province mm -hmm. is what goes to Champion. So. But it'll just be for the FCSS, not the food bank. FCSS, mm -hmm. yes. Food bank separately. Right. Stand corrected. Um, no, I just I didn't mean to correct you. I just wanted you to know. We left the emergency services at the 5500 and that's for the, uh, some, some of that work on the uh, regional uh, 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 emergency management plan to try to put together. Those were the wages that we used to pay for, or uh, that we used to pay for wages. Now we're going to use that to update the plan. Um, yeah, it, like I said, you can spend a lot of time on this. Uh, we, you can see one of the big changes in the bylaw enforcement is the vehicle lease. Uh, we are at the end of the lease on that vehicle. We're going to keep it in the in the leasing company's name because that way they'll sell it when it's uh, reached the end of life. This is basically our free year on it. We're, we're only paying administrative fees on it, which are about $100 a month. You don't think it's worth buying out? It, because it was the first time, they did it for a four-year term. And uh, with the amount of miles that we put on, on the vehicle, it's looking more probably a six-year term. would be better amortization for us. Uh, we paid a little bit more and advertised it out quicker and we didn't wear the vehicle out. Mm -hmm. so. That's why I wonder if it would be better to buy it out. We looked at the at, at the bio and we, we will have it advertised right out. Uh, the problem with buying it out is that you have to sell it your, yourself rather than uh, the leasing company will bring it back into their fleet, sell it, and they'll like, credit your account with that, with whatever they sell it for. Yeah. So. There, there was pros and cons to both sides. And did you do the numbers on it, or we, Janice, or? Janice and I both talked to the leasing company, and yeah, there's pros and cons. One of the biggest things with leasing is not having the asset in your books as a depreciated asset. So if it's leased, it's not yours. So he said, that, and of course that's bigger. Uh, he, the, one of the guys that I talked to out there referenced City of Calgary places like that. If they don't, if they lease them. They just become an operation budget thing. If they buy them outright, they become an asset that they have to depreciate. So we don't look at it that much on that side. But so with the unknown about the tourists and how the committee is going to run it, uh, I see the expenses are still at three hundred forty-two thousand. Will that change possibly for the tourism? Yeah, you jumped ahead quite a way there. Well, I know, but I had a question. Well, if I don't ask it right away, I don't remember. Okay, yeah, let me get to so it. You have to, then we can go back, and I'm fine. <laughs> I already got it written down here. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah, so what we did is uh, we brought the revenue back to more of a realistic where we feel. Uh, the 40000 for Volcon was something that was taken out of the society's budget when we looked into it further. There's not actually only one year that they ever actually had a revenue of 40000 So we're going to go back the other way. We know uh, that we should be able to bring in about ten. So we put the revenue down there. And, and uh, 
for the merchandise that we have uh, at uh, 88, we felt was a lot more reasonable. And then there was some grant funding that we uh, know that we're going to be, that's going to be available. So yes, so expenses, we tried to hold on as, as tight as we could. Now we can go back. Same question. It, it, it was a really hard one because the very first year was a, I'm not going to say a guess, but it was a trying to take society's numbers and old town numbers and try to come up with. And Volcon was the one that we really fell down on as far as revenue. So, so we wanted to make sure to identify that. We get into common services, CLC. From year to year, Stu flops around uh, in, in between the pickups and, and a few of the equipment in there. You'll see it'll go from $200 to $1,200. That's basically when uh, they put a set of tires on a truck. And they basically move it from one truck to another through the years. The more you see this, the more you'll get used to it floating around. Uh, Stu was able to keep the majority of his budget at uh, less than last year. Uh, funneling a bunch of funneling, moving a bunch of money to streets and different places. Uh, so his overall of all the departments that Stu's responsible for are within a thousand dollars of where they were last year. But he moved into different categories for different uh, streets is a, is a is a very big one. Uh, you'll see he went. Uh, Yeah. Oh no, that's your date, sir. Yeah, no, that's that's where we are. His his big ones. Uh, he took out quite a bit out of the sand and gravel, and you'll see all of this water, all of the money that came out went into uh, his water program. Water treatment is straight in. No, that's the operation contract operation of the water commission. Storm hasn't uh, was a change in wages. FCSS, you can see the difference in the revenue there, Paul, from uh, 199 down to 186. And cemetery pulling the revenue the same. Expenses are down a little bit. Uh, we're not going to be doing any sidewalk. So there, uh, or laying up new sidewalks, we figure, figure we have enough for the next couple of years. Development and planning stays very close to the same subdivision uh, until we know what happens with the uh, Prairie Vista Estates. Uh, we're, you'll see it went up a little bit, but we, uh, until we get into, they actually do production out there, we won't see the large come off that yet. The economic development we held the same. Recreation, uh, the majority of the changes in recreation income are from the, the, the town and the county contribution. One of the big changes is you can see here programming other. Reasons why it's in other this year is Bonnie Clans on uh, holding a 5k that is supposed to be a fairly big event. It's going to have entry fees, and they're looking at it uh, this summer as a very large event, bringing in almost $18,000, but there will also be expenses fairly close to that. So we wanted to, uh, she asked if they'd be identified as a as their own line item in the budget for this year to see, to make sure that the committee could uh, can evaluate how successful the program is. But on that, the, the expenses went up by 80000 but the income only went up by... So where was the other um, expenses in it? So, oh, for, for the income? On recreation, income was estimated at 158 and expenses yes. at 248 Yeah, only half, of course, only half comes from our county contributions. Right. So, so the... Increase from Ex in, in expense on, yeah. So, some of the areas that she had fairly uh, large exp increases were, the, of course, that event, all 
I'll show you it here. So that's her program other. Uh, she had, we didn't have anything budgeted, and so it's up 15. Up 15. So there's still another seven thousand. And then somewhere. they went on here for supplies from twelve to twenty-two, and that's for that event coming up. Oh, yeah, but there was only budgeted two thousand dollars in that category before. That's, or no, I mean sorry, twelve thousand. So went, they went to twenty-two. 20, so it was a twelve thousand dollar increase yeah. there. Or ten thousand. Ten thousand, and then yeah, the fifteen that wasn't budgeted for. That's the majority of the change in the recreation. Uh, Bonnie is also going to present this at the joint meeting on Thursday. Thank you all for answering that email too. That was came last minute while I was in it. So on that, speaking of that, we're going to do go right from one to the other, right? Yeah, to the well, it's going to be here, so we'll oh. we'll just go straight through from that to the pool. The BMMP, uh, there's thousand dollars difference from last year. The pool, uh, there's an increase in revenue, but of course that's the revenue from the county to pay for half of the project manager, and the change of a hundred thousand is strictly the project management. Uh, some line items changed uh, within there, but very little. Repair and maintenance went down four thousand, but our uh, uh, our chemical went up four thousand. So. But yet, that um, anticipating the pool's not going to have as long a season. Are they still anticipating that we're going to have as good an income? The yeah, from uh, because most of the swim uh, we aren't going to be canceling uh, uh, swim lessons, those sort of things. Those are the major. Comes. Oh, okay. uh, the public swim doesn't really get us that much because those are usually done in passes. So at the end of the season, they're they're mostly all paid up. Okay. So the big increase in the income was the yeah. count, the county contribution. That's what I figured, but I wasn't sure if, if they if you did any calculations on loss if we close no. a week or two early. No, the arena. You no. Know, very close to the same library. Again, it's the same water. Uh, you, this is the one where you can see that. Oh, sorry. This is the tour center. Yeah, we already touched on that. Yeah, I want to get to sorry the, about that. Uh, <laughs> water distribution has the biggest changes in the budget as far as expenses. And uh, contracted repair and maintenance from sixteen thousand to thirty-one thousand. Uh, repairs and maintenance from fifteen thousand to nineteen thousand. And then we have a category for valve repair down here that was fifteen hundred, and we've upped it to sixty-five hundred. That's to do with Stu wanting to implement uh, some new program changes because we're not doing uh, infrastructure this year, uh, and we're doing it every second year now. On the odd years, he actually wants to bring in a contractor and get some of the valves ready to actually save us some time and effort uh, when we're doing the bigger projects. So this is his effort at, at doing that. We all saw that the some water breaks go very well and nobody knows, and other water breaks don't go as well. Shut down three or four blocks for half a day. So this is something that he would like to do inside that, but you can see didn't really change about 30,000 but he removed that from other portions of the, of the budget. The sewer dropped 5,000 and the garbage there was an increase in, in rates uh, but the collection fee remains the same. That as close to balance as we can with the revenue that we bring in well, co the, covers the cost of water, water and sewer versus garbage. Garbage actually balances quite well. Well, in four years ago, it did. We've been slowly working our yeah. way to that. Uh, the most notable change for this 
is probably under administration where last year you transferred 200,000 you basically got your contingency reserve up to 200,000 we weren't able to put that amount of money back in for this year to Transfer to reserves. Yeah. Let's transfer a capital contingency. Yeah. You just pass the two. I'll transfers. Okay. Right here, twelve five and thirty five thousand. So there's nothing going in for function and re right. contingency reserve. So, and basically what we did is when we got the, the budget there, we put in <coughs> enough to get your contingency reserve back down to 100000 rather than the 200000 because, of course, for uh, a couple of years you kept it at one hundred. Because of the train tracks going in at 150000 this yeah. year, uh, if we put it in completely in the budget, it would have unbalanced it by about $100,000. So we would have to propose a tax increase at this point. Really, until you see if you have a surplus or not, that's probably one of the easy. That's where you took the money from last year to take it to two hundred thousand was from the, uh, from the surplus. So I basically talked it back up to the hundred thousand where you'd like to maintain it, and come time for surplus, that's when you can look at uh, at, at bringing the contingency reserve back up. It currently has a balance of about sixty thousand. So the bad thing about that is more more or less what happened to us with the. CPR is, you know, we knew it was coming, but we didn't know when and how much, you know. And so those are the only advantages to have a little bit of, of a cushion there so you don't. But, you know, to keep the taxation flat, anticipated flat, then we have to. Stu mentioned that uh, you can see right now he missed the calculation in his, and he sent this by an email this weekend, so uh, you wouldn't have got a copy of it yet. Uh, this was to October at 35000 so he's anticipating fuel. Uh, if we have a lot of snow, we're, uh, he's going to add another $10,000 to the budget for it, and we, what we'll do is we'll pull that out of the, the money that's going into contingency to, to balance the budget back out. So when we do bring this for final approval, you'll see that... Uh, because we're currently, as of October 31st, we were already $1,800 over our budget last year. So he wants to bring that. Well, it's bring in that consolation, long-term forecast is saw in the States, warmer and drier. That will help out a bunch. But that, that's one of the uh, amendments that we'll make to the budget to bring it into balance using the money from the contingency. So, but yet again, on the other hand, it's supposed to be a a more severe winter than we had last year. So I'm not sure which dartboard so we're equipment watching. Equipment <laughs> might be, our equipment might be running regardless. This is the U.S. Weather Service. Yeah, I just know that Farmer's Almanac is predicting a severe winter than last yeah. year. And if you go by the berries on the mountain ash trees, it's a terrible winter. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. So, so I don't have room for arthritis. So I don't it isn't moving in just yet. Feel <laughs> it. Okay. So, so if you're happy with this, uh, what we'll do is uh, basically you can receive this for information and uh, direct administration to bring back a uh, uh, draft for the next meeting. This was just to uh, beat it up. If you have a bunch of changes you'd like to see, let me know. If not, uh, I'll bring it back for approval. It's just a summary. That's right. So Yeah. Is there any areas that struck a chord with anybody that anybody would like to question on? Or, uh, I know one change we've made with our business is uh, changing our telephone provider, mm -hmm. which cut our our uh, bill down almost fifty percent. Mm -hmm. But we did that last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we put in we put in a brand new phone system last year and cut ours almost in half. And we're looking at uh, some more efficiencies inside that with the fax. Now that we didn't switch over the fax and the debit line, 
because the new one was a, a new one. So we haven't uh, completed those ones yet, but we're looking, uh, Ken will be here next week to look at uh, switching those ones over as well. Like an actual fax machine or like, or like an electronic yes. fax? No, we still get faxes because we have to have them for uh, land titles. But like for, for real estate, I can send and receive a fax from my phone and I get it in through email and it's timestamped and that and it's much it, just from my experience it's much easier for sending it that way there's more clarity when you're going to send it back and forth it just saves yeah a few bucks but we don't send anything with our machine but we still receive lots from our machine so and it's the other agencies that won't change at this point yet yeah it makes us panic when the line doesn't work for two or three days so but we're looking at that okay okay anything else Any? so when we meet with uh, about the pool of, um, the airport airport and um, fire. Fire, fire yeah and will there be any changes there do you think and if so do we just adjust here yes yeah I don't think uh, I don't anticipate any changes but okay that's fine the county has had a copy of this recreation budget uh, without the uh, project management in it. They've had a, the, that for over a month. They asked for it at the end of September. So. Yeah, and the, the, the um, airport's pretty stable. It's yeah, flat. it's 8,000. And uh, yeah, if they were all that easy, it would be in and out. And, <laughs> and the fire is very, very close from what you saw from our record. Yeah, and farther on you'll see that the county has requested that they not do as many programs as they've done in the yeah, past. So training stuff is so budgets been cut. It's been flattened or cut. So, mm. so that's a good question. Anything else from anybody? Okay, if we, somebody wishes to move it as just receive some information. information and bring back a draft to the okay. to the next meeting. Well, and, and if there's something that strikes a chord, you know, definitely give Kim a holler and, and he can, and Janice can look at it. No, when the county takes a week to go through their budget, do they sit and go line by line by line by line? Yeah, like, like they the, sit down and focus on it. But even even that, even those lines, they even go deeper into each line. Really? Mm -hmm. They want to know how many times you changed your socks in the last month. No. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here's it's all. <laughs> no, but I mean, they, they go into in depth. Really? Oh, okay. I mean, so they, we they micromanage. Our, our employees are doing their yeah. job. They, they, you know, they micromanage each one right down to the, the ninth to make sure that every, you know, cent and penny is accounted for, and, and which is their prerogative. I just wondered when they said they couldn't meet because they had to, a week long budget meeting. Yeah. I'm like, Whoa. And no, I, they, and again, I know they have more money to spend than us. And twice as much. But still, it shouldn't take a week. Well, like I said, you know, and, and they do, They, I, I think the county always has had that um, process where they, they go into more detail than, than what we've ever. Um, again, the, you know, there's pros and cons to... Ours is open to council anytime. If you guys want to come in and play, you guys all know that. Uh, to look at. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't even know how to answer that. We, we have, a, we we have, have a, one method and they have another. Yes, right. that's, okay. that's right. Yeah, that's probably the best way to put it. And, yeah, Our, ours, is, ours is very open. And if they for, vote, don't yeah, for the amount that you Well, I, again, if, if you folks wish to change it somehow, we, we definitely can. I, I just. Um, you know, we used to have Janice come in too, and, and we'd spend a little bit more time on it. And um, when you take a look, at most of our numbers don't change a lot. I mean, unfortunately, the county has had a huge decrease in income too. So, you know, theirs is going to affect them on the assessment. That's so. You know, they have concerns that they want to spend more time on. One one of their big things uh, that's different than ours is with their loss in in revenue they reevaluated their programs. So one of their big ones, like yeah, everybody read the paper last year, they cut their road program down from 10 miles to eight miles. They 
mock the salaries of their employees. They didn't hire so many summer employees. They, they, they go through, through their budget, their department heads put a lot more onto their counselors to make that call. The, you know, the department heads don't want to cut 10 employees or cut four miles of road. So they ask council to make that decision for it. And that's what takes them a lot longer. If you start, because if they cut that, then where does that? And if you listen outside that recording, if you listen to the department heads from the county, they were all asked to cut seven to ten percent out of their budget. So if you ask Stu to cut ten percent out of his, it would be two million of that budget. Well, that's two hundred thousand dollars. That's that's a lot harder than just moving money back and forth to buy fuel and and doing a little bit extra paving. Or, so so I won't say that our process is simpler, but we're not putting as much on you guys as council to make those decisions because we're just basically using the same amount of money we had last year. And yeah, our numbers really aren't changing much. And so, but again, if, if somebody has any questions, you know, definitely, you know, bring it to administration. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why I gave it, gave you the detailed copy with all my notes this year to let you guys just have that blank slate because. I kind of felt sometimes that if I put all the notes in for you, I tried to think of all the questions that were going to be asked. It doesn't allow you to, because a lot of times I've looked at these numbers so many times, somebody with a fresh look at it will catch one of the numbers there and ask that question. And it's as good for me for you to ask that question as it is to already pre have a pre-populated answer in there for you. Yeah. I can't remember, did we raise the taxes at all last year? Um, slightly. Okay. Yeah, but we, we raised it a little bit. They went, they, yeah, they went higher in the in the industrial, but that was because of a change in assessment. In, in assessment. It was the two years before. That you yeah, had, yeah. Had, yeah. Uh, you did uh, 0.5 and 0.5 for a one mil increase over two years, and then last year was the slight adjustment to get it back in line. So probably next year we'll be looking at raising them a little bit again. Uh, depending depends. on what it looks like here. Yeah, it depends on how our assessment goes. If, if the assessment goes up, you don't have to raise taxes. If the, it stays the same, then if you want to add more services, then you have to raise. And there's really two only the two things that you could do. Assessment goes up, you don't have to raise taxes. If the assessment goes down, you have to raise taxes. Or, or you, cut programs. And you, you take a look at the whole list, you know, there's very, you know, some programs, if you cut much, the program is not there. Um, I mean, there are probably, you could probably go through and say, well, I, you know, program A is not my favorite, but, um, but yet, yeah, might be somebody else's too. So. The best way to think of it from a global is the assessment goes up from a taxpayer standpoint. If the assessment goes up, your taxes still go up. The mill rate goes up, your taxes still go up. At the end of the day, if you want at the very last column, if you want this number revenue to be the same as last year and your expenses to be the same as last year, then something has to, you have to cut either, that's where, that's where you have to start cutting, cutting your program. And that's where the county, again, you, you've all heard, you know, when they lose a million dollars in assessment, they have to find a million dollars in expenses to cut. And, and unfortunately, you know, like the bottom three on that list, the water, sewer, and garbage, are our toughest ones because they're all uh, an asset or a cost that's quite fixed. And um, that's where it's really nice when you look at this budget and you look at the, all, you, you saw the little manipulation that was done inside the budget to try to stay where, where the numbers are. The $100,000 there is straight that the easiest way on uh, on expenses is that uh, project management. That's you know, and that's something that wasn't in the budget last year. Yeah, I just can't remember if we raised it last year or not. There was a slight increase, but of course the assessment dropped in the uh, commercial, so a lot of people in the commercial didn't see a break. So yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions, folks? Should we just vote on that, or do I just make
I know what Allah made it. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. So we'll bring that back to the next meeting. And with any of the information that comes from the Thursday meeting. On Thursday. Me meeting. Okay, moving on to the uh, ATB <coughs> request. I thank Karen for. And this is one of the nice parts about iCompass is I got this email while I was in Edmonton at 3 o'clock on Friday and sent an email to Karen and she was able to add it to the agenda. So the system works nice. I don't encourage people to start sending things at 3 o'clock on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not asking for the road to be closed? No. Just to just say just to No. Yeah. And, and I think the big one is, is uh, pulling the wagon with SUV so that everybody knows that they have permission from the town to do that. Oh, so it won't, it won't be, be horses. horses. It'll be an SUV. I guess I just assumed it was. So who's uh, insuring that? The ATV. Yeah. I'll make that motion to, to um, let them do it. Okay. George Lee moves to the roof to approve. Any, any other questions? Thank you for that allow. The one concern I had was clearance lights. The trailer. On the, on the wagon itself. Yeah. Didn't mention that. And Main Street is well enough lit. They shouldn't need it. But It'd be easy to put some lights on the wagon. But if they have to, all they have to do is contact um, Eagle Eagle. Dale Grohl. He's got them plugs into their outlets. And yeah, those I mean, lights on the back. Yeah, okay. There's, there's probably lots of them around, but I mean, he has a set. It doesn't take much. Yeah. No, I mean, it might not be hard, hard to stick it to the wood when it's a magnet, but I'm sure there's ways around that. So. Okay, so George Lee moves to approve this one. Any questions on George Lee's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? This is carried. Okay, moving on to the golf course minutes. Waste condition. Pardon me? Waste condition expression. Oh, I have. Oh, I'm going to jump. Oh, I put George Lee's name one farther down. Sorry. <laughs> George Lee's already approved that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> It's okay, Lorna jumps to the end too. Oh, that's There's right. Yeah. So it's not nothing just linear Lorna's about fault. me. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to know anything about administration or any of that. I want to know what tourism's doing. <laughs> well, it kind of flashed through my head, so I, I didn't realize you were going through yeah. each one. I'm not going to say that I haven't given it lots of thought. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any questions on this? this? Is the July 25th one? There is been one since, but it's unfortunately we don't get the minutes until the day of the commissions and I think the only way we're going to change that is to change some staff. Well, I know I'm writing one person on getting minutes to me in a timely fashion and when you go two months between meetings I know, and then they ask you to prove something do you remember what you did two months ago? So anyway, any questions on the solid waste? Hearing okay, none, we'll move on to the golf course. Up to speed fairly quickly, and then he also tries to bring in the battery fast. But anyway, we'll move on to the October Mayor's Reeves. Were they just worried about the helicopter pads for the size of the helicopter? Yeah, there was a concern, and then the, the last meeting, because we sent a letter and haven't received anything back. Um, um, it was a question asked, and, and a couple of them still aren't that as big a concern. Th this is kind of a federal, you know, that's the word, the federal and the province are kind of at odds. Um, 
the transport. Yes. Transportation is federal. But yeah, yeah, for the for the aviation, and so but that you you are right. The concern is the, the landing site's not big enough and not heavy enough for the bigger helicopter. We probably never have a bigger one coming here. Would we? we have the biggest one that comes here, but it's it's more than that. Uh, yeah. that okay. Okay. So the last time it was upgraded, it was upgraded to the to fit the larger helicopter. So anyway, but yeah, so the, some of the concerns have been kind of dropped, but they still try and follow up with the letters that they send off. Any other questions on the mayor's Reeves? If not, Fulton County CCR Elder Abuse October events. Questions on that one? Well, I know I had to look up what comorbid is. <laughs> this lady runs quite a tight ship, doesn't she? It, her meetings are absolutely incredible. <laughs> That's what I've heard from a lot of people. Oh, yeah. like, oh my god. It's amazing how she does it. Accomplish a lot in a short time. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other? No questions? Somebody wish to file the committee reports? All? Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's good, thank you. Okay, we'll go on to reports. Mr. Taylor. Water Commission is the only one I was at. Got the new rates, and I haven't got the minutes from it yet. <coughs> but they are coming. Other than the rates, the only really substantive thing I think was the raise. Yeah. You gave Kathy, the, Kathy Kate gave the manager a raise to try and bring her up into the 21st century. Questions for Paul? Okay, now we'll move on to Ms. Bolt. Um, I was at the Water Commission also, and I was at FCSS. They're looking at putting a new security system in that has cameras because they've decided that <clears throat> they need a new camera out by the youth center door. And that just mm -hmm. like, for a panic situation or something, they won't have to be cameraed out there. So we. Uh, we changed our um, our policy to amend it where a champion is no longer part of us. So now it'll take five people with two of the five being elected officials on there to make one. So that will be the new status for a long year. Um, and they're busy getting all their winter programs underway and, and stuff like that. But it um, seems to be running pretty good. And I was also at the rec board. Um, she, we're going to put an ad in the paper for a member at large for the town to take um, a spot of one of the members that moved to BC. And that, and Bonnie gave us a, a book on um, Virginia Mitchell Park to look through it, and uh, she wants us to talk to people out in the community to see how we can revamp that area. Here. So if you guys have any suggestions on what you would like to see up there, how you think it would look better revamped in any way whatsoever, if you can either like email Bonnie or myself or whatever and give us, because we're open to all the suggestions we can get. So is, is she sending out uh, to all the groups too? Um, Starting with the committee right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, she gave us a whole big binder. And, no, I just, you know, like, I mean, there's so many groups that use it on a full-time basis, yes. and, and yes. I'm, I'm sure they would like to have some input before. Yeah. Uh, this is something that's kind of just starting in, it's got a little bit of luxury of time. Um, maybe an idea, if we end up having another community engagement event, that we can really work that into it and mm -hmm. try and get as much feedback on that as possible. Yes. And utilize it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because the more feedback that... Um, we can get for up there would be great. And I think everybody's kind of got an idea in their head 
what it would look like if it was better situated up there. So, no, all your feedback would be wonderful for it. So, and that's, um, that's all I had was the Water Commission, FCSS, and the Red Board. Okay, any questions for Judge Lee? And now, Mr. Magnuson. I had no committee meetings, so I have nothing to report. Okay, thank you, sir. Moving on to Ms. Thomas. I didn't have any meetings this last couple of weeks either. Okay, thank you. Ms. Roddy. Um, on February 24th, um, kind of we've been doing chamber, me we chamber meetings weekly. I mean, I can't talk today. Um, with the exception of the Halloween week, just kind of getting everything organized and everybody's, you know, policies and all the administrative kind of stuff um, to take care of and get the board set up. Um, and then also, um, that was addressing some of like the minor Halloween window contests and stuff that they had run between the businesses and um, with the county. And that was 24th, the 25th was Community Futures, which had a lot of um, the community updates and kind of really focused in all the organization involved and what's going on. Um, <clears throat> kind of the biggest thing with community features is the new um, program manager that's going to be coming, um, which is very, super exciting, very, very sad. Um, it, it, but great. Um, retirement's fantastic. But, and then the 29th was victim services. Um, and that was mostly kind of updating from the RCMP and going back to dealing with the ongoing um, like updating and really security into the policies and making sure that that's all in line and updated and current. Um, so that was one thing when they had the big term on the board is just <coughs> that the policies really desperately needed some attention. So, um, and on the 29th, victim services. Um, or sorry, the six victim services again dealing with um, some contract policies and stuff with staffing. Um, November 7th, again with the chamber, and that was kind of focused on the policy side, but as well as um, in December, they're just doing a, um, or sorry, in November, a social networking event in Milo, actually on the 14th at 6 p.m. They need for their business members. Um, which is kind of exciting at the hotel there, six to nine. And yeah, that's it. Okay, any questions for Michelle? Very none, Marla. Um, I had the Marcus Foundation, and um, we hadn't met since I think Michelle Bahir or something. It's been a long time, anyhow. Um, and I shouldn't say I hadn't been there because we were away at uh, AUMA for a while. Um, we had an election, and Dick Ellis is the chair, and Lori Lickman is the vice chair. Uh, we've been going over policies, and we have a new super binder with everything in it, which is quite interesting. Yeah. Get it all up to date. And we were looking at the budget. Uh, we had, I had a health and wellness uh, meeting on October 31st. We're going to continue our community conversations. Uh, they did Lo Lomond and Champion. Milo and Airwood got cancelled because of the storm, and uh, one hasn't been set for Vulcan yet or Carmagee. The gala was on November 3rd, and um, unfortunately I was unable to attend it, but I think it was fairly well attended, and it was a tribute to Donna Graham, who was one of the founding board members. Uh, the, there's a fundraiser still going on for Valentine's Day, so see me if you need a ticket, and even if you don't, see me <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and uh, its first prize is a hot tub, uh, donated by Furniture Villa, and second is uh, accommodations for two at the Palliser in Calgary, and the third is a quilt made by Wendy Denby and Lynn Market. Um, the operations manager, uh, they're looking at doing up a new job description and looking to hire someone for Deb. Uh, Deb Parton will be gone shortly, although she will stay and help out. So, I mean, 
I think if you don't just absolutely quit, people will keep hanging on to you. And that's great. She's good to help us out that way. Uh, on the um, second, we had a strategic planning all day workshop with uh, Ursula Sherwood from uh, Community Futures came over and did it. She's, if we ever need a facilitator, she's excellent. And we had a teleconference call also last week. I don't remember what day. Thursday. Thursday? Okay. About the seniors' housing, about the viability and feasibility. And then um, I was supposed to go to the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board this Friday, but I got a note or an email saying it has been cancelled, so I'm re registered for February 7th. So. You can get you in, sir. Well, she said I could go to Edmonton, and I just slightly declined. <laughs> there's, there's some other courses that have come up from the school fairs as well. Oh, is that right? Oh, okay. Well, it's a little sooner if you'd like to. Okay, well, I, I just told her to re-register me for that. So. Anyhow, I think that was all. No one else had things, but I have everything in the last week of the month yeah. always, I think. I have a quick question. With your To the Health Foundation, <clears throat> you guys have been giving the names on communities. How is the attendance within the smaller community? I believe there were about 15 or so in Champion, and I'm not sure of the numbers in um, Lomond, but that was the week that we had the horrible snow, and uh, so the fact that even people turned up, that was, that was really impressive. So we are going to continue on that, and so we'll get another chance to get out to those communities and maybe better weather will see a better turnout. Oh, maybe then with the community decides a champion. I'm oh, so yeah. Sorry. That's a great. Well, that's what I thought. I was quite surprised. And Lomond, I think, was maybe only about five, but uh, it also was not a, a really great day. So. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, How much are the tickets, Lily? How much are the tickets? That, that you're buying from me? Yeah. $10 each. <laughs> okay. <That's awesome. laughs> and I have books if you need. <laughs> so if I buy one of each, I could win? All three? No, I'm not <laughs> sure about well, that. Three, but by three, you have your increase your chances. Chances, that's true. Or but if you bought know. a book, you would increase your chances even more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Anything else for Lauren? Two books. Yeah, two books. Yeah, we'll move we'll on to me. Um, I did have a waste commission meeting um, two weeks ago, and uh, we went over the budget and. Um, there was some fine tuning on it and some number crunching that had to be done. So it comes back on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night this week. Uh, there was a big discussion on recycling. They decided to take the number two plastic and the plastic um, to the task. And so they decided that they would go through it, every bit of plastic that goes into every container, divide it off and calculate it out and did a whole thing and probably at average year it costs us about $25,000 to recycle plastic in that process. So they are not going to do that. They're going to probably most likely right at the moment, landfill it. Uh, so we will take the recycling in and unless it's something really obvious, the rest of it's going to get just landfill because it's just too expensive until something comes about to make it more economical because there's just no place to, so you can store the plastic forever. But so I think that was a decision that was being made, is that... It's in the fuel for Masper. It would be perfect fuel for Masper, which moves me right into the next one, which is Sewa, um, which was in Lethbridge. Um, and I think I've been harping on it, the last two items that all that's left is the two studies, um, the land siting and the geotech on the land siting. We did apply for grants. Um, the Alberta government is kind enough, they believe, I think we believe that they're really trying to get us online, you know, to, to see what they can do for us. So they have appointed a person that's dealing directly with um, um, Sherry um, on, on how to apply for these grants. And they have a, I can't remember what they call it, it's an elder rhythm that they have on the computer system. So when you apply for a grant, if you use these keywords, it moves to the higher portion of the, of the pile. So there's keywords that you have to put in there. And the more you use those keywords, the higher it goes into the category. So Sherry knows what the keywords are, 
collaboration. No, and there's, there's a lot of other ones, so that have yeah. other. Um, but anyway, um, so if you want to know how to apply for a grant, talk to Sherry. Uh, she works at the county, and um, and she, she knows these keywords that have been told to her to, you know, if you can put them in every line, uh, your name. But it's, it's all done by computer. Uh, you submit it, and it evaluates them, and then moves them into the queue, and then they pull off the ones at the top. And if they like them, great, but if you don't have enough of those words um, in there, you're s still in the queue. It's just that you're more in the list. Well, you could be <laughs> retention. So yeah, that was something that was kind of neat. Um, I went to uh, an R&R &R, uh, retention and um, doctor's retention. And of course, I'm sure everybody has heard that we we're going to lose a doctor in January. Um, there was a lady there, her name is Lisa. I don't know where she's from. I think she's originally from Australia, but I'm not sure what part of the world of Alberta she's, but she works for, um, she works for RPAP, which is uh, the program for uh, retention and hiring. And, um, but anyway, they've got about four doctors that have already applied for this new position, for this doctor's position. Um, one has been a locum that's been here for quite a while. And so she's quite interested in, in carrying on, but they felt that they had to go through the whole process. Um, I went to Mayors and Reeves, and the um, um, it was fairly well attended, and um, I, I don't have the minutes off of it, but as soon as we get it, I can't remember exactly. I was trying to think who the guest speaker was, and um, I sat in a better location this time, but, um, but I... I brought the papers in for Kim to get some of them to see um, on that. Oh, and going back to Sewa, there is, I, I brought in a, a confidential document that was done on the um, transportation study and the dumpster diving. And so if you want to look at it, you can read it, but you can't, can't leave the facility. It's confidential. The information is not releasable to the public yet. Um, Moving on to, I did go to the hospital gala. Um, it was, you know, it was, the numbers were nice. The, the group was excellent. Um, the meal was good, if you could eat it. Um, I just, there's not much on the agenda other than the, the green stuff that I can eat. Um, but, you know, it was, it was well attended, or fairly decent attended. And um, I, I don't think that they raised the kind of money that they were hoping to, like they, but. They were only at about 80 or 90 on Wednesday or Thursday, yeah. so. They yeah, really I think they had 135 is yeah. what they, um, but there was, there was a lot that didn't show up. But the nice thing about it in a way, it, the, the group that was there um, were able to sing some really decent songs that people could dance to, so they had a bit of a dance floor. So it was kind of a, a different gala, but they did, like uh, Marla said, it was kind of a, a tribute to, to, to Donna. Um, for uh, The next one I was at a, a, another Sewa meeting, and we had a group that came to talk it was in Wheatland County about funding, and um, so there's two or three different groups that are coming right now to deal with funding. So on Wednesday, I got another meeting in Strathmore, uh, County, uh, Wheatland County, on another group that's wanting to uh, talk about funding, and uh, Peter Dawson Lodge. I was at there on the the um, teleconference on that. Um, unfortunately, I, because of that teleconference, I missed the, uh, they had a building committee meeting, but um, obviously there hasn't been much going on on that, but they just wanted to bring us up to speed on what they're doing in, in light of not being on site. Um, went to Howard's funeral, and um, it, it, there was a, an appreciation for us for bringing in that bylaw about flags, um, for the two flags that were lowered, and, uh, and the flowers. So. Thank you to Council on behalf. And then I was at the um, Remembrance Day service on, on Sunday. Um, and um, yeah, so that's what I've got six or eight meetings this week. But so mine are. Work, working is optional. That's right. <laughs> any questions on any of the stuff that I. Well, thank you for speaking on behalf of the town and the county. I gave well, a couple of them a little bit of heck about I, that. I, but I felt sorry for, because I don't know, like, Serena was asked to, to, to lay the reef, but she asked Jason if she had to do anything else, and he said no. You know, and, and 
this should be off the record, but um, <laughs> you know the the Legion has done this for a hundred years, I believe, on Remembrance Day service, and sometimes it's really hard to from year to year to get the flow going. So it's it's kind of disappointing because I think county doesn't get an invitation as readily as we do. And I think part of the reason we do is because if I don't show up, they don't get sound. <laughs> <laughs> and video, in this case. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but it, it was a well-attended event, mm -hmm. so which was really nice to see again. But um, but anyway, um, I'm not much of a speech maker. Um, you did good. Uh, I, I just have a few t titles on my piece of paper, and then I kind of fill them in. And, and, but anyway, um, so next year coming around, maybe somebody else maybe should get an opportunity to participate too. So, anyway, the deputy mayor next <laughs> next year. Oh, is that so? <laughs> <laughs> yes. March first, October thirty first. So then it would be Laura. Laura. Well, Martin Martin did a nice job. He did. Um, yes, he did. And, yes. um, and, uh, Isn't that nice that he came over to ours? He could be in Brooks. He could be anywhere. Yeah, and and I, I think that um, I think he had, does a great job of trying to spread himself around. And I, I'm sure that it's got to be a difficult task for him to to it spread himself. Wouldn't be out of order just to send him a note. Thank you. Well, I thought it was great. I, I visited with him before. I didn't get a chance to visit with him after because we were cleaning up and putting stuff away. But I did visit with him before. Thank him for coming. But I didn't. But, uh, but yeah, it would hurt for us to probably. As a community, say thanks for attending. Anyway, anything else? If not, somebody wish to move council reports? George Lee. Any question on George Lee's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Okay, moving on to <coughs> Kim's um, action list. I finally have that gray dark enough that it shows up. Yeah, it, it, it works good. <laughs> it makes it harder to read now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we most of the way through the list, uh, of course, uh, we can't dispose of the one property until we get the land titles into our name, so that got delayed. And uh, we're currently getting the uh, regional FCSS agreement out for distribution. I've heard back from Two of the other three municipalities that have already made the made the approvals. So, so that will go. Down. The rest of the action list is complete. Okay. Any question on that one? Okay. Moving on to the admin. CAO's report. Uh, really, the highlights are. Letters of support for community futures, that's in our policy. Anything that benefit, benefits our community, uh, the CAO can uh, approve the letter, letter of report. If, it, if I question it at all, then I bring it to council for, for approval. And the, ones, the, the one that uh, community futures asked for was uh, to support a uh, women's conference, which will benefit the whole of our community. So I got that straightforward. Uh, no financial implication to it. So. Uh, that was a pretty easy one to get done. The, of course, we looked at the vehicle lease that I uh, talked about already inside the budget. Uh, where we <coughs> updated our security on our website uh, through the county. Uh, it's something that we also have to look at doing through tourism. Uh, that site isn't uh, as secure as we would like it to be, so we're going to get that fixed up. Provided the new counselors with the ICS 100 training. I've got one certificate uh, emailed to me. I think it's riveting information. So I'm hoping that you guys can get that one done before uh, the January 9th and 10th. Arrowwood is, will be hosting it. So for the rest of the council, uh, I've held spots for you if you would like to attend. Isn't that just on? Uh, 200? 200 is available online, but you the should. 200 is not recognized in Alberta, so you have to take it proctored through uh, through this. So. so it has to be through basically the Arrowwood, and it's okay. Yeah, and really, 200 is probably as high as the council will ever go. So that'll cover you. So if you knew term. perhaps that you wouldn't be here on the 10th of January. <laughs> 
Yeah. How many do you, do you, can you take it online? Well, the but it's not recognized. The 200 is oh, not recognized. Oh, now, now I they, see what you mean. Now they do hold them all over Southern Alberta all the time. So uh, this one was local and Christopher, I know it would be handy. Christopher got some grant funding to put it together. So I, uh, if he mentioned that there was a place available if we brought our own food kind of thing, and I said, well, maybe if we contributed it to lunch, we could have a spot for our counselors and myself. But he said, yes, so he's holding those spots. It's good. Uh, who's taken up 100? Or not taken yet, sorry. I was going to look at it. That's why I was a little bit confused. Why I thought I went and looked at it. And it's it's if, if you look, look into it really close. The 100 online is recognized. The 200 online is not recognized. Okay, sorry. That's where I was kind of getting confused. I'm like, well, I went through it. I already looked. I didn't complete the 100, but looked at it. And I'm like, and it looks How long did it take you there. off? Two hours? Yeah. So, say four for the camera. Or, <laughs> or, 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 uh, yeah. Well, it was, it was good. I, yeah, I made some silly mistakes on the test, uh, but I still got your seventy percent. Okay. So anyway, we've got I've got that all arranged for, and if you can't make it, just let me know. Sure, Tom. I didn't get a spot for you. What? Uh, I, I should go. Maybe you wanna... I would like to go. Would you like to go? Okay. Yeah. I, I've got my four hundred for those that know. Tom's got the week the week long training. But, so. but yet it um, it is, doesn't hurt. To, uh, you can have more. more it's a refresher. It, it is a great refresher, and it it, it, it definitely doesn't hurt because like the four hundred was way out there. Like they might be using them for the, the, the level four hundred for the for the California fires right now. They might be. But they didn't use them for the, the 400 level for the, for the Fort McMurray fires. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, it's, it's quite a, in our area to take it, unless you want to make a career out of it, maybe. I, as I mentioned earlier in the budget portion, looking at uh, HDS is coming to look at some phone and, and uh, security system updates here at the building. Uh, we uh, also assisted the Chamber of Commerce held one of their executive meetings in the, in the council chambers because it's available through policy. I don't know if they're going to continue doing it. Uh, it is, I don't know how it worked out for it, but uh, uh, they said they would touch base and, and let me know uh, if they're going to continue. Um, the pool project management meeting, not to give too much away, but uh, we're going to want council's input on a couple issues that. Sorry, George Lee, that was the only day it was available. I, I do it's at 6, isn't it? It's at 6 o'clock, yes. And the other month meeting was at 4.30. Oh, 4.30. And that, that one, the county called, same thing. I was in Edmonton and asked if I could arrange it. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> so, you would, did that through. Um, I reviewed the community service manager's job description and responsibilities, and we're trying to draw on the strengths and uh, and and uh, refine that position a little bit differently before we get the staff back in the uh, tourism center. And then I have the formal meetings. We had the IMDP meeting, and the draft is just about ready to go. So we're gonna, they're doing the final draft, bringing it back to council, and then we'll take it to an open house uh, jointly with the county. The Tangle Project Management, we have the kickoff there. Again, some more information. We'll wait till everybody's in the same room to bring forward and uh, the certification advisory committee I was in Edmonton for two days and that, and that's my report okay any questions for Kim okay. hearing none we'll move on to development officers chance to uh, read the report. Uh, one of the things was the uh, designation of the heritage site mm -hmm. to change to hardboard. Really, for what we do, the town is designated as a heritage site, and really the province lets us put it on their website and identifies what makes it a heritage site. So the siding being one of those things that's identified as heritage, they kind of question 
what does it lose if it is changed? Because structurally, if they, so, so they're kind of looking into that and uh, what do we lose? So if they decided to go with a hard board, I think they would put it to the Heritage Advisory Board that we have, uh, which contains members of the town, the county, the villages. Uh, so, so there may be a question of that, just depending on what, what the votes look like when they come back to, to do the site. Yes, and Lori. Did you? No. Oh, no. you should. Oh, the, the Historical Society is going to review it. She's first. the chair. Yeah. So that's what came out of the meeting that he requested she attend. Okay. The yeah, other rest is pretty straightforward. Comments on. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to the public works. The door is in the library. Mm -hmm. The door which? The door that they were waiting on, the library is in. Oh, it's yeah. in. Like it's it's in physically in the it's physically it's actually, yeah, it's yeah. physically installed. Yeah. Well, it's just that it's been a you know a, a tough go because they haven't been able to get exactly what was needed. So. Mm -hmm. well, they kept asking me and probably Laura as well. Do we pay part of the bill? No. no. Make them sweat. There is a conversation about how they would like to wait as long to get paid as we waited for the doors. I don't think it was a serious conversation, but you know. Obviously, obviously some of them haven't been sued yet yeah. Yeah. For, for that delay. Yeah. But that took a long time. It was painful. I, I see Big Sky put an ad in the paper thanking the administration and the Public Works for their support while they were doing the demo. Yeah, he, he spent a lot of time in our community that he didn't think that he was going to. So, well, it's it's kind of nice to see a person kind of held up to his end of the bargain, even though that the bargain wasn't as good for him as what it should, could have been because they never anticipated the concrete being as thick as it was. Yes. He took a job that by thought he was going to be able to complete in three days and it took him almost two months. And he stuck by his price and showed up for work every day. So. Now, I mean, the, the town did a system, which was great because mm -hmm. it, you know, it definitely was a positive, but I, I tell you, I was really impressed he, that... He donated, so he contracted us at uh, $18,000 to do the work and uh, he donated that much work. So we gave him a tax receipt for the other that he donated. So he did a public thank you. For that. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was good. You know, and the public works helped him out a bunch with a bunch of little things. So and he did a nice job. Well, really, it really does clean the site up, and in, in, in the in the cement that's there, hopefully they can build a, that garage on it and, and uh, store their chemicals on site inside. So. Any other questions on stews? Here and now we'll move on to the community services manager. Asking and I phoned. Yeah, we accommodate them where we can. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been overwhelming by any means, but uh, mm -hmm. almost two thousand dollars. We've helped all where we can. Okay. Any questions on Bonnie's talk? Okay. Moving on to the CPOs.
mentioned that uh, he's now received the new mounting bracket, so he's going to be able to flip the strings around a little bit uh, more, more readily. So he doesn't actually have to take the mounting brackets down, he can just swap the sign itself. And we have the uh, batteries so that, uh, so that they don't have to be brought back overnight to charge. How is he finding the digital signs working? The awareness is, is good. Uh, he, on the other side of it, is in certain areas you can see the uh, exceed, uh, exceeded speed over the posted limit during prescribed times. He issued 12 tickets. Uh, there's, he did a fairly good educational push on that and didn't seem to have too much of an effect. So he went to the tickets and uh, has noticed the number. The reason I'm asking, I'm just wondering if for his capital budget, whether he should think about another set of signs so that he could move them around because we've got the pool, we've got in front of the school there, we've got the current right. weather. Right now, because of the uh, temporary nature of the ones on the 534, uh, it's way cheaper to buy brackets as opposed to the signs. So, okay. so right now he's looking at, uh, and then mounting the other set of brackets, and then he's going to work with Stu to do more of a portable stand. So basically a way that uh, we can move the signs to any block in town. So uh, one area that he talked about was along Memorial. Yep. This was an area of concern. Any other comments, questions for Griggs? Moving on to the fire department. I've been meaning to ask this question for since we started seeing these. Uh, so. so first response. No EMS from Bolton. Does that mean just like just the fire department went and there's no ambulance? Is that what that means? It means that the yeah they went tell the ambulance could ambulance could get there because there wasn't one available. Okay. Yeah, quite possibly it was other times when it wasn't a call and there was no ambulance available. <laughs> I don't know if it's getting better or not now. Is nine typical for like not having an ambulance in bed I don't know. Does it seem kind of high in terms of their previous reports? That's the we, Yeah, we have had high numbers before, but that we were tracking it and we had better numbers before. Uh, yeah, it's 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 high. But, uh, we've been that high before. Is that typically just like a staffing thing, or it's an ambulance thing? It's an AHS thing. Thank you. Yeah, you know, there every municipality always has concerns about those numbers with AHS, but AHS, um, they um, they move their ambulances around to where they believe they. The majority of the calls are so um, that's not to say on those nine first responses that they weren't doing a transfer you know or on an emergency of somewhere else but there is well I guess it's nine it's eleven because there's two rules in two towns but um, there is a good chance that they were flexing and it's the flexing ones that bothers me and what happens on a flex is that uh, if an ambulance leaves High River they pull the one out of Manton and then if they need one from somewhere else, they'll pull Vulcan to ambulance to partway between that and Vulcan, so it'll sit on a corner there. Um, and it just sits there and waits. So if there's a call, which makes sense, they'll go either east or west. The part that bugs me the most really is when it has to go east to Lomond, because they don't flex anybody over to Lomond from anywhere. If there's nothing in Vulcan, then they still might have to come out of they don't bring Travers up or Brooks over or anybody else closer to Lomond. So those people on the Lomond country uh, pay the price, in my opinion. Like the Lomond mile was, I mean, I mean if they're out 
west of town and is called at Brant. I mean, they're 15 minutes closer to Brant than they would have been if they were in Vulcan. So, so flexing is a concern to me. That's a common regional issue. It, everything for the rules. Again, you know, it's just more or less what this gentleman here is. We live in the fringe. We are the forgotten child. HS has done uh, presentations all over, and then they're almost, it's probably due for them to do one at the sake of communications meeting more. And they, Arrowwood is another good one that really, they really, they, they have different times that they have to respond to different areas, and they say that they respond well in our areas, so their system is working. Some people don't agree with them. <laughs> well, I, I, I <laughs> and, 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 if, and have told them uh, at the last communications meeting they took a lot, there was a lot of criticism of the system but it didn't, it didn't change anything yeah. it's, so a, it's a tough one because of the numbers you know but the, the thing that bothers some like me that was sat there and were promised that we wouldn't see a change in our system and service and which is a bull faced lie I mean I have no problem saying that publicly and, and not have to re make a retraction on that one. Uh, that we have seen a reduction in service because we had two ambulances, full time crew and a part time crew back up 24 7. We don't have that now. So, we took care of when, when we looked after it ourselves. So, you know, I have no problems of, uh, of admitting that one. But unfortunately, you know, they, they go with numbers and again, we're the forgotten child. We are, and and uh, happens with just about every organization that we belong to. It uh, if you don't do it in house or on your own, quite often, you know, the partnering is a great co co collaboration. But you know, the city of Calgary, you know, still does different things than we do. But but anyway, and, and the bad thing about the the first response is it, it comes out of our budget. You know, something that we pay for as municipalities, you know, because we're paying for it and then we're also paying as a provincial taxpayer to the AHS. So that's where, you know, a lot of rules get have to double dip. But yet there isn't a municipality out there that that's rural especially that hasn't felt it. There has been talk about the uh, fire departments tracking and billing for their time. It really hasn't gained a lot of traction. No. A lot of people have put a lot of. And the bad thing about that, though, is that, you know, is it's our, our, our residents is that would suffer because, you know, those nine would at least have somebody show up, do assessments, you know, do, you know, all that pre stuff so that when the ambulance gets there, it should speed up their process. And, you know, and so it, if we said, no, we're not interested in doing first response in our community that really affects the level of care of our, our residents, that's for sure. We had an incident at the store a couple weeks ago and the, we do go two weeks ago, and the fire department actually started the IV and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. For that lady that was at the store. Yeah. yeah, no, and they have some very well-trained um, people and they even have a, one of the EMS fellows that's on the fire department that's paramedic and and the government has allowed them to do within their scope of practice you know do some certain things mm -hmm. and so if they're an EMT or paramedic or EMR they can do up to that scope of practice but it, but it is cost to municipalities and you know you can notice like you said and the reason why Vulcan would have nine and the rural might have only two potentially is that we do have extended care and Peter Dawson Lodge and Especially Peter Duff's Lodge. Extended care, they, they never used to go to as much because they have a nurse on. But, uh, but sometimes you end up being even more, they wouldn't even be called to, uh, to the hospital to assist. You know. They don't do uh, medical drivers as much as they used to because age has changed their policy. But, but anyway, any other questions on the Peter's report? Okay, hearing none, somebody wish to move the, or file the administration reports? Laura? Thank you, Laura. Welcome. Any question on Laura's motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Let's carry.
Okay, moving on to the final. Michelle moves to German. Any questions? Michelle's motion. Hearing none, all in favor?